This is the Dominic King Show on BBC Radio Kent, and here's proof that it's never too late musically. Hearn Bay-born Paul Baker is the lead singer of an unsigned 80s band called Daniel Takes a Train. The familiar story, the band broke up. They got on with their lives, they got married, and recently they decided to set up a Facebook page, just for themselves really, to remember the good old days. Putting up a video of a song, and it was seen by Germany's number one indie label. 30 years later, Daniel Takes a Train is back. So this is Paul here, I'm the lead singer with Daniel Takes a Train. There's four of us from the band here together tonight at rehearsals. Just looking back, really, at Daniel Takes a Train and the history of the band, the band were formed from 84 to 88. Got Dan, the guitarist, here. Dan, um, predominantly your musical influences sort of shaped the band. I was into mainly guitar bands, but I listened to a lot of funk and even rap music, incredibly. But they didn't really filter their way into Daniel Takes a Train your influences were probably slightly different from mine. You know, I kind of was into the sort of Aztec cameras, orange juices, that sort of jangly guitars. But I think that's what, you know, made me really feel that, that we had some sort of bond because I just love the way you played guitar. It took a while for us to find a real um, style Sound, of music that we yeah. could really stick yeah. with. So, of course, then we had to find a bass player. And I think you, you, you kind of, is it you met Rupert for a friend or? Rupert was working with uh, my flatmate and um, he was the only person I knew who had a bass, so bass players are still on the ground. I had no knowledge of how to program a drum machine. Producing music did take a long time, and uh, we spent a lot of hours in a coal cellar uh, yeah. rehearsing two nights a week sometimes. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And, and, and if we had a gig, it was always the uh, rehearsal the night before. We put an ad in the Melody Maker for a, a drummer with the, the title, um, Are You a Drummer with Style, Charm and Commotion? And uh, that's right. I, uh, I, I answered. James, the drummer, replied. I, I answered the ad. First person that I met in the band was Rupert, the bass player. Right. Uh, I went round to his flat in Streatham. Right. And he gave me a tape. I took it home, put it on the player. Cause I was, it was mid eighties. It was eighty six, wasn't it? Around that that sort of time that I, you joined, I joined yeah, the probably. band. Yeah. The initial thing that really appealed was that was, was the strength of the songs. I think the tunes were really good. Mm. And it, even now, when I, when I yeah. listen back to what's on the album, I think the, the earlier tunes sound great. They're a bit rough and ready in places, but I eventually met the rest of the band in this um, cellar in, in Chelsea. And, uh, <laughs> and that, they were the two things that jumped out at me. Um, I thought the band looked great. Yeah. And the songs were really good, and that's a great combination. You've got a chance. If, if you've got those two things in your locker, yeah. you've got a chance. Now, I wanted to be in a band that had a, had a chance. So we had our sound. We, we then took our tapes around to around the record companies, um, had some interesting uh, comments. Dan, you said that... It was my job to take the cassette into EMI. Yeah. And the EMI A&R guy uh, had been to the... Gig. Arranged a meeting. I went to the EMI office, the famous EMI offices where the Beatles yep. were signed. Yeah, yep. big office with a big sofa. There was a obviously a cassette machine, and he he put the cassette on, and there was a, a pause, and then there was a sort of jangly guitar came across, and we were sort of I was nodding along, and then he just turned it off, and he said to me, um, "Yeah, uh, we're not looking for the next." Haircut 100, uh, can you play like Killing Joke? <laughs> so, uh, not, not quite so our style. It was no. quite deflating, but, um, you know, it just goes to show we were, yeah. we were in the right place. Yeah. But, uh, you know. Yeah, so we had, we, had a four, yeah. we were a four-piece then, um, thought we were, we were doing well, but we kind of felt, I think it was at that time when we were listening to some of the other bands who, who were bringing in sort of brass and sax and what have you, and we thought perhaps we need a little bit of uh, extra pizzazz so um, we kind of, I think if I remember correctly, you and I went to a gig uh, for a band called Helen and the Horns. They had a, a little hit with yeah. a song called Freight Train. Freight Train, that's it. Waiting at the station for the freight train to come by. Never thought that I'd be here on a but, Yeah, Drag me along. Paul was wearing dark glasses and <laughs> a trilby hat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And um, it was a curious little band. It was a, a woman playing guitar and some sort of three tall, yes. tall men yeah. sort of honking saxophones. <laughs> to her. Very trombone, trombone, trombone and sax. So, so it, it was a bit arty. Yeah, yeah. Um, but 
So I'll bring in good, Paul. Good decision. Yeah, bring in Paul, the sex player. So, so when these uh, little urchins uh, approached you and said, uh, do you, well, join our band, uh, what was your sort of initial reaction? Strangely, it, it, was, it, it was quite positive, even though I didn't know who you were, because Helen the Horns was beginning to sort of wind down at that stage. And I was already looking around for something else to do. So I thought I had nothing to lose, really, by going along and no. seeing, seeing what this band was about. So we basically had our sound. We had a, a five-piece that were on the road. We did um, gigs, Ronnie Scott's Empire Leicester Square, mm. Hammersmith Palais. Mm. So, I mean, I guess, I guess we, we kind of thought we had a chance of success. We, um, you know, there was a few exciting moments where uh, Paul and Rupert gate crashed the Brit Awards. Uh, in the uh, you know in the, in the hope of getting some exposure and trying to get the the band signed. Radio one. You saw the Brit Awards on the telly, so there's no point in me talking about uh, that side of it. What I will say though is that the best bit for me in the entire evening was when a young band had flagged their way past security and past everybody else and uh, came up to as many tables as they could find with the media people on and put in their hands a tape. And the young man who came up to me, uh, who fronted the band, Daniel Takes a Train, came up to me and said, Pete, uh, you may not ever listen to this, but I thought I might as well try and get into this occasion and find as many people as I possibly can who can possibly help us. And for that, <laughs> 10 out of 10. Daniel Takes a Train. Good luck, you. did a few other little events. We did the, um, we played on every tube station on the Circle yeah, Line. We did. Yeah. That was fun, just to try. Yeah. And we got a, an article in the Mail on Sunday, which was, which was good. But sadly, sort of come to 88 time, we did one last foray. We went and shot a video. An afternoon, quite pleasant. But then sort of it took a little while for the video to sort of uh, come to surface. I think they were doing I mean, a lot of editing. There was no YouTube in those days, no. so you couldn't put the video. No, no Spotify. Had, I don't know what you were going to do with that video, other than maybe hand it to people. Yeah, yeah, that was the plan, so, I think. It, and also videos were quite expensive, so yeah. uh, mm. bands like us didn't do videos. No, it was all self-funded, of course, because mm. we had no, uh, no sort of management or backers and what have you. So 88 came, and then, Dan, what happened, mate? Well, you deserted us. Well, the writing was on the wall. We played a gig at the Labour Club in Lewisham, <laughs> which was a bit of a come down from Ronnie Scott's yeah. and the Empire Ballroom. Was that the and last ever gig? It was, were, yeah, it, was, it, was. it was on my birthday, was 20, it? 22nd of April, 1988. It wasn't anything wrong about the gig or the <laughs> venue. It was just seemed to me we, we weren't, really, didn't seem to have any clear direction. So I went to, on a teacher training course, right. and then by, the, by May I was off to Barcelona. I drove down to Barcelona in my Peugeot 104, yeah. which was still running. The band car. And yes. uh, I never looked back, and actually I had a band in Barcelona within a few months. Right. Uh, I had my guitar, so I had a girlfriend who did have a job offer, and I went with her, and then I found a job when I got there. So, okay. uh, so basically that was the end of Dan I'll Take a Train. Yes. Paul, can I ask you what yeah. you... You, when, when I left the band, what were your plans with the band? Because obviously you realised you had this demo, you had some songs. I wasn't saying you couldn't use the songs. No. What was your next move? Well, I think I tried to, to uh, go and see a few more labels, um, but we, we kind of, I think we were waiting for that video, really, because I think we sort of put a lot of effort and, and, and into it, and we thought that, that was going to be the difference, but didn't really happen so kind of i think people just sort of drifted apart really was it james about a year ago you kind of came round one 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 evening we were looking through the old Absolutely. photos I, and the memorabilia felt, and the tickets i've always been one for looking back and harking back the good old days and in this modern modern era it'd be great to get it online where not necessarily the general public can see it so you set a facebook page up um and it was yeah. uh, you know and it's all Okay, you know, it was, pretty it was, dormant, but you know, just yeah. a few, few, few likes here and there, and what have you. And then suddenly, I, I, well, I remember you, you, you rang me up and you said, "Have you seen this message?" Yeah, well, you, you do occasionally get messages on, on on Facebook, but this one seemed a little bit different. So I, I just rang up Paul. I just ran it by him, and uh, he said, "Well, let's run with it. See where see yeah. where it takes. I've got nothing to lose." So, um, so um, basically, they were they seen the video of "I Don't Want This Love," and uh, they were interested in putting it on a compilation album. So, uh, yeah, we thought that was really cool. We, had, we hadn't anything released from the 80s, so it was nice to finally have some recognition. But then there was something that, that sort of told me that, you know, we should perhaps at least let him hear some of these other songs. We, we felt we'd worked really hard. We'd got 20 songs that we'd recorded really well in studios. We'd paid a lot of money to get it done. So we kind of got the cassettes out, dusted them down, tra transferred some of them to MP3s, and um, we actually sent 20 songs over. And, and then amazingly, it was literally... 
think it was within a few days. Yeah, uh, this, this guy called Uwe Wigman from uh, Fire Station Records, uh, which is Germany's number one uh, indie label, uh, came back and said, you know, we've played it to the uh, other guys at the label and we'd like to sign 17 of them and bring out your debut album. So mm. Style, Charm and Commotion came out uh, literally just over a week ago now. Um, and uh, it's been amazing. I mean, the response we've had has been phenomenal. We, we, we can't believe that the reaction we've had. It's been an amazing experience and we're looking forward to uh, the uh, fun journey continuing. And uh, it's been great that Radio Kent have uh, played part of that journey. Uh, I was born in Herne Bay, still have got a family house in Deal. Dan's got a house down in Deal. So it's, it's great that, you know, as Kent lads, we are really uh, enjoying this ride and long may it continue. <laughs> Daniel Takes a Train, their debut album 30 Years in the Waiting, Style, Charm and Commotion is out now. And they're playing on Sunday the 9th of September at the Troubadour in London. They'll also be with us in October here on the Kent Sessions with Casey, which is on the way with our band tonight, coming up here on BBC Radio Kent.